I, <laughs> I would now like to call the Secretary Anthony Chisholm to the, uh, to the podium. Uh, thanks, Dick, and welcome everyone to the 2012 State Conference. Uh, I acknowledge the traditional owners and elders past and present on whose land we gather today. Uh, I want to give a special acknowledgement to all the life members who are here, uh, not only delegates on the floor of conference, but also those observing. Uh, it's great to have here with you as, here with you, uh, as well. Uh, I'd also just wanted to acknowledge uh, Jenny Sams, uh, who's been a long-term party member on the south side of Brisbane, uh, and more recently in Calais, who passed away, away recently. But Jenny was a fantastic fighter for the Labor Party, uh, no matter where she was living in Queensland. Congratulations to Dick Williams on his election as president, and I look forward to working with you. There is much that needs to be done. Uh, and thanks to Andrew Detmer for his time as party president, and I wish you well in the future. Uh, and welcome to Evan Moorhead, Moorhead, and congratulations on your election as Assistant State Secretary, which hasn't quite been announced yet, but I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to thank all branch members for their work over the last 12 months. I understand that it hasn't been easy being out there on the front line, uh, but I really appreciate the work that you've put in, especially the candidates out there in regional Queensland in some of those tough seats. The effort that you did was phenomenal and we really appreciate it. Thank you so much. As a third generation uh, party member who joined at age 17, Apart from family, all my adult life has been dedicated to the Labor Party. Like many of you in this room, I don't think I'll ever get over the election result that we had a few months ago. But just like the 1974 election result drove a generation of party members to ensure that never happened again, that's what we've got to ensure never happens after this state conference. This is our first conference where we find ourselves in opposition in Queensland since 1997 which means it's 15 years since our last conference. Thanks to George Wright, Carmel, and, Carmel Tebbett and Michael Lee for taking the time to conduct the review. I know many branch members are cynical about the seemingly myriad of reviews the party undertakes. Our job this weekend is to set a clear path for reform, to effectively communicate that with the branch membership and rebuild trust and faith in the party. My speech is part report, part analysis of the current challenges and plans to get us through them. The work of the party office since our last state conference was dominated by the election campaigns at both the state and council level. With new legislation covering campaign finance, there were many complex legislative challenges that party office had to deal with. A heavy emphasis went into training of party members in how we comply with the legislation. We also invested heavily in campaign action training uh, to ensure that our candidates and campaigns had the best grassroots model available to them. This is something that needs to be part of the future. The date of the state election ended up being determined by timing of the release of the Flood Commission report. Subsequently, the date of March 24 was announced six weeks before the intended date. We headed into the state campaign in a diabolical position. The glow from the Premier's efforts during the natural disasters had disappeared. The LNP temporarily got their act together and we united around a new leader who had a strong public profile. A privatisation battle that saw some unions target sitting MPs with substantial advertising campaigns. Public polling had, a, had consistently put the swing against the party at double figures. The longevity of the government had well and truly caught up with us. And private polling in December of 2011 had us losing Ipswich, Rockhampton and Greenslopes. In fact, every seat we polled since the 2009 state conference had us losing. No matter how big the margin, uh, no matter how big the Labor vote, the swing was always big enough for us to lose. The one exception to this was Ashgrove. In early February this year, we found ourselves on 53% of the vote due to the hard work of Kate Jones and the local team and also growing doubt about Campbell Newman in that community. It is important to have a realistic view of the pendulum heading into the last state election. We had only 13 seats on a margin of 10% or greater. Of these 13 seats, we had five retiring members. We held 21 seats in the 5 to 10% range on the pendulum. Clearly, if we were going to return a decent number of MPs, we needed to win seats in that 5 to 10% range. Any hope of establishing a positive Labor record uh, in the first week of the campaign was wiped out by the federal leadership ballot. Once our polling resumed the following day, the swing across Queensland was at 16%. I know branch members have expressed concern about the tone of the campaign. 
But as the review notes, given the circumstances that we confronted, there was little option. Of course, in hindsight, there would be things I would do differently. I'm sure many people in this room feel the same way about the last term of government. You learn from every challenge you face. The review conducted by the panel was thorough, professional and provides an opportunity. It is up to this conference to grasp that opportunity presented in the review to take the party forward. There has been much debate within the party and the media in recent months about our relationship with the Greens. There is no doubt from a Queensland point of view the Greens are our enemy. You only have to look at the seats they cost us at the state election by refusing to preference Labor. Scroll through the Greens website and all you see from Larissa Ward is, uh, is press release after press release attacking the previous state Labor government. But the fact <coughs> is here in Queensland, we aren't at risk of losing seats to the Greens. Analysing the results from the state election, despite how, how much the Labor vote dropped, the Green vote also dropped. They didn't pick up any of the vote that Labor lost. In Queensland, we have a new threat on the electoral map that raised its head at the state election, and that is the Cata Party. Another minor party that tries to be all things to all people, uh, whilst the party is made up from the odds and sods of the political spectrum, much of their support at the election was pulled from traditional Labor voters. I understand at the national level that minority government is a challenge for our federal colleagues. But at the state election, Cata had success appealing as the party for working people. How outrageous that Cata uh, of all people is appealing to people as the party of working people. He sat around that cabinet table with Sir Joe. He sacked Seacope workers. He took away their, their entitlements. It took a Labor government to return those entitlements. Catter is just another political opportunist sensing an opening. There is only one party in Queensland that represents workers. It isn't Catter, it isn't Greens, it is the Australian Labor Party. Yeah. All party members and unions, affiliated unions, have a role to ensure that Queenslanders understand Cata doesn't stand for them. Our state leader, Anastasia Palaszczuk, has been taking this message to those people who left us. From day one of her leadership, she was out there in Ipswich, uh, taking this message up and down the state, meeting with workers and communities, rebuilding the trust of voters every day. Whilst the current LNP government is making this job easier for us, let's not forget how hard Stacia, Tim Mulherrin as her deputy and the caucus have been working to rebuild this relationship with Queenslanders. Stacia also passed her first electoral test as leader, winning the South Brisbane by-election on April 28. Congratulations to Jackie Trad on her election and the LNP caucus are figuring out what a passionate work colleague Jackie Trad is. I want to acknowledge the former member for South Brisbane and Premier Anna Bly. History will remember Anna's reforms to education and when the state was tested with natural disasters, we should be proud that it was Anna as Premier who led the state through these challenges. I would like to wish Anna and Greg... I would like to wish Anna and Greg all the best for the future. The other important task our leader has been undertaking is rebuilding the caucus relationship with branch members. While Stacia and Tim are out talking to Queenslanders about the damage the LNP government are doing, they take every opportunity they have to meet with branch members right across the state. <coughs> I certainly know that the branch members have appreciated the dedication that the leader and the caucus have been showing to the party membership, and I think in terms of providing an effective opposition, what Stacia and the team have shown is that numbers don't matter. Absolutely. On the same day of the state, uh, of the, as the South Brisbane by-election, we also faced a Brisbane City Council election. The timing could not have been more of a challenge coming so soon after the state election. I want to pay tribute to the, in, uh, to the phenomenal Ray Smith. Almost two years ago, he put his business career on hold to put his hand up to run for the Labor Party for Lord Mayor of Brisbane. His work ethic, commitment, knowledge, political skills were on display for all to see. Ray could not have done any more, and the party owes Ray a great debt of gratitude for his efforts. Thanks to Shane Sutton for her work as opposition leader over the last term, and I look forward to working with Milton Dick as we hold the Quirk administration to account over the next four years. It was instilled in me when I first joined the party that being in government is the only thing that matters. The reality is, is we now find ourselves in opposition, and our aim needs to, be get, to get back to government as quickly as possible. This conference must set the agenda for getting back to government, because those people who rely on Labor governments can't afford to wait. 
We are not going to get there unless every element of the party is strengthened. Our membership numbers must be greater, not just in one particular seat, but across the whole of the state. To grow our membership, we must give members more of a say on things that are important, like national conference delegates and our policy processes and our pre-selections. But these, challenges must, these changes must never be at the expense of our broader electoral viability. The relationship with affiliated unions must be rebuilt. A strong relationship in opposition must become an unbreakable bond in government. Mm -hmm. And our policy processes need to be reformed. Mm -hmm. We need to engage with the broader party and give more people a say. The platform must be rebuilt from the ground up. Labor's core values remain at the centre, but importantly, we ensure that branch membership has faith about the implementation of the platform and that we have a Labor caucus that are proud to do that job. Our candidates need to be of the highest quality. Our pre-selection process, process is thorough so that the party has confidence that newly elected MPs of the, are, are of the calibre to form a Labor government that Queensland deserves. And we must do better at getting Labor people elected to local government. Labor councillors in many parts of the state can become the next state Labor members of parliament. When considering reform proposals this afternoon, I urge you to consider the above criteria, but particularly our efforts to grow the party. <coughs> too, too many people think about how these changes affect their role in the party. But if we want a bigger party, we need to think about what we can do to make changes that encourage people to join and then encourage people to continue to renew. As delegates to this conference, we are tasked with guiding the party into the future. Let's lift our horizon and encourage Queenslanders to join our movement. We aren't going to get back to government unless the party is in a stronger position across all aspects. Our membership growing in number and passionate about our cause. Our policy process is strong and inclusive of all branch members and we have a culture where the party comes first in all our deliberations. The next electoral test won't be the state election as important that it, as that is. It will come next year at the federal election, where once again Queensland will be the battleground state. Defending sitting MPs and working hard in those marginal seats will, must be our focus. The federal battle lines have been transformed before our very eyes over the last two months. You can sense that on the ground, Queenslanders are getting a sense of what an Abbott government would be like and they are concerned. We can't sit back and wait for people to make their own conclusions. Our campaign needs to take this to the community. Training has been a focus of the party over the last 12 months. Uh, special thanks to Shannon Fentiman, who's coordinated that from party office. Uh, a lot of coordination goes into our work on the training modules, and since the election, we've had a focus on uh, the recruitment training in the southeast corner. Uh, Post-conference, the focus needs to be on taking that member training to the regional areas, uh, and include online options as well, so that all party members get a detailed policy uh, training option before them. We will work closely with the National Secretariat as they work on their plans for a training coordinator. <coughs> Thanks to the staff at party office for all their hard work over the last year. It's always a big year when there are elections due. Uh, thanks to Abby, who's been a fantastic addition to the staff, particularly dealing with uh, the, the financial uh, challenges that we've had. Thanks also to Peter, Jane, David and Deanne for their work, and a special thanks to Sharon for her work coordinating conference. We have had some... As Dick touched on, we've had some fantastic volunteers uh, post the state election, and many of them are here today. Thanks to Dolly, Phoebe, Barry, Jenny, Margaret and Laura for the support they've been providing to party office. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I also want to acknowledge Chris Forrester, who's decided to leave as party organiser. Chris has been a hard worker for the party. I don't think any party official has visited more branches than Chris over the last few years. Uh, whilst branches will see less of Chris, his family will see more, and I'd like to uh, thank Chris for all his hard work over the last few years. The party is emerging after a devastating electoral defeat. The history of the party shows that we only grow whilst we're in opposition. That's the reality of the last 35 years. Already this year, our new membership numbers are almost double compared to the same stage last year. The challenge for everyone in the party is to keep that growth going and ensure that those members become long-term party members. The reform proposals today aim to make the party stronger. Stronger in numbers, stronger in policy, and stronger in candidate selection. We will only win government when the party has achieved all these aims. Let's set, let's set the direction to do that this weekend. Thank you. <laughs>